uh, Betty. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm here with Deb and Kim, and we are on Lemon Road, and we are going to the spot where Shanda Sher was killed. Um, in 1992, a young lady named Shanda Sher was 12 years old, and unfortunately, she was tortured unimaginable, an unimaginable death for this young girl. Mm -hmm. um, two hunters, farmers that were hunting in the area stumbled upon her smoldering body and at first they didn't even realize what it was until they got a little closer and they discovered it was a body that had been burned. Um, this morning we found, actually found the memorial marker of exactly where it happened so we are heading back we've got some some little girly things to bring for her and we're going to talk to her and see if we can see what we can come up with today well as you can see we're out in farm country um, the girls that had taken, well, actually kidnapped Shanda, uh, drove these back roads for hours with her in the trunk of the car. And they would, uh, periodically stop and open the trunk and, and just savagely beat her with a tire iron. Um, it was, um, over 19 years ago that this had happened. She was just 12 years old. So we brought some things here, and we're going to place them around the memorial, which is right over there, oh, past the ditch, amongst those weeds. We found it today. Mm-hmm. Well, Betty, I know you're a Christian, so if you feel the need to, to say some words or something, please feel free. I don't know what I'd say, because it's like, when I, when I was first asked about if I knew the story, and I, I didn't, but all the, since I've been, I've researched it every day, and I read the same information every day, I feel that... I could have been friends with her. Yeah, she was a cheerleader, and no, I don't like cheerleaders, but, I mean, two days apart in birthdays. We would both be 32 today. Um, of course, I didn't live here then, but if, if I did, I think I, I think I could have been friends with her. And uh, I'm so upset over the situation. And I don't know if it's because I have, I just feel so connected to her or the fact that it's just a human being that was tortured in an unimaginable way. And somebody who has spent my life being picked on and bullied over my weight or my glasses or just anything that I feel and that could be what my connection is because she was, she was bullied, yeah. beat, burned. The girls that did this to her have to live with the fact that what they did for the rest of their lives, and I hope they suffer for it. I yes, hope. Me too. I hope they feel. I don't think they do. I don't know. Because how would you be able to do something this cruel and not even feel guilt about it? Well, I know I've seen a couple interviews of Lori Tackett, mm -hmm. and she is just a total smartass. I know, and she talks about being tore up about it, and I wish it wouldn't have happened, and. But you look like you're enjoying. Yeah. You're enjoying the attention you're that you're getting. Yeah. You're, you're famous. Well, I just, the way she conducted herself in that interview, I mean, she was um, flippant. She wanted to play the victim in it. And, you know, she said she was sorry, but it wasn't a genuine sorry. It was like, okay, I'm sorry. And I'm thinking, you know, you have no conscience. And if you keep this up, then you're never going to feel remorse for what you did, ever. Right. And hopefully they will keep her exactly where she's at. She's um, has been up for parole several times. And 
And who knows? They said they the earliest release date would be 2020, but they still have several years after that before the 60 years. I want to get up. down here and show you that, um, you know, it's it's little, I think, what, they're circular bricks? Yeah, I think they're like the sidewalk stones. Yeah. But this is but this is laid out in, in the exact spot that um, the hunters found her body. So this is the the area here where she had passed. And I'm going to um, it's not going to be like a ghost hunt, but I I want to see if she and the spirit still around. I'm hope it's not. I, I really hope it's not. I'm hoping she's with her dad and she's at peace. But um, I don't know, people have seen too many things and heard too many things out here to, for us to think that, um, you know, she's stepped on over to the other side and is peaceful, so, but we'll see what we can get, so, go ahead, Kevin, put your little things down there for her. I'm going to put these flowers here, Shanda, and then a little dog that I always love. I'm going to put it right there. So you can play with them. And I've got a winged unicorn, Shanda. And I've had this since... Gosh, I don't even know. I've had this thing forever. And when I saw it, I thought of you. Because I think that at some, at some point that you'll be able to fly away. And maybe the wings of this... I know it's an inanimate object, but it'll symbolize that someday, if not now, that you'll be able to to soar and go on with your father and stop by your mom's house and hug her and just let her know that you're all right. And your sister, I know they miss you so much. Very, very peaceful out here, isn't it? It is.